All right, here's the question I wanted to ask you. Sensitivity, death, all your blocks, what has helped you deal with them? Like, have you improved on them, and how do you do it? Therapy, obviously. The biggest part of thing, it. but the, the biggest thing is outside of therapy was talking about it. Besides uh, the love and, and care and compassion that my family and my loved ones have and take care of me, one of the biggest, I talked about it in my book, but you know, when I accidentally spewed the fact that I was suffering from something called OCD on the Howard Stern show. What year was that? 1999, 98. Yeah, I was just going to guess that. Yeah, it was on the E show. No, it was on no? his radio show. No, 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 but they would air it on E. They, maybe they I don't know if this point. was, I don't know if this was aired on E. I, I've told the story many times, but he was, he, I was in there like he did on his radio show. He always had like uh, multiple guests on at once. And he had the guy on that was uh, from puppetry of the penis. Mm -hmm. The guy was doing things with yeah. his dick. And I, I started focusing. I had already gone to a therapy and I had OCD. This is a long time before the Me Too movement. Men used to do puppetry with their penis. Before Me Too, you could, people loved it. You're not allowed to do that anymore? Not as much. Not no, as I much. think they're allowed to. It's, you're just not allowed to have a subordinate. You, do right, the you can't, you have to tell them, you have to tell them ahead of time. Well, they can't do the you puppetry have to for it. you. <laughs> I need you. To, they, <laughs> She's operating the puppet. <laughs> anyway, the point that I'm making is that I, I couldn't, I saw the guy touching his dick and then leave. And I, I was just focused on the door because he had touched the door. It was in the summer. I'm wearing short sleeves. He finished his interview with me. And I said, uh, he said, you can, whatever, I can go now. And he said, uh, and I said, can somebody open the door? I don't want to touch the door. The guy touched his dick and I don't want to touch the door. They go, open the door. I go, no, I went to grab some tissue to open the door with the tissue. They knocked that out of my hand. I, I went to open it with the, my shirt. Uh, somebody knocked. I literally that thought out. you were going to say you open it with your dick. Go ahead. This is my puppet. <laughs> 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 but I, I, uh, I started to hyperventilate and I was having an anxiety attack. And I said to Howard, I said, I, and this is funny. I get it. You know, I, I get it. But I, I, I'll be totally honest with you. I've been to a psychiatrist and I've been diagnosed with something called obsessive compulsive disorder. And I take medication and I'm about to pass out. So if you don't open the door for me, then somebody should call 911 because I, I can't, I'm, not, I'm this close to not being conscious. And he said, sorry. And he opened the door. And I walked out in the hall and I realized I heard in the speakers in the hall, they were still broadcasting. I thought we were in a commercial break. So you know, this was a national radio show. Oh, wow. Show. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, wow. And my heart fucking dropped into my stomach and I was beside myself. Who knows at this point? Your family. That's the list and probably yeah, Rodenberg and... No, just my family. Just my wife, really. I didn't even tell the kids. But um, I, uh, I thought, oh my God, this just got nationally broadcast. So this is the end. This is the end. I never felt like the end of the fucking world. And for many reasons, first, this is getting broadcast nationally. So my whole family is hearing it. My kids are of school age. They're going to have to go to school the next day. And everybody's going to know that their father is a mental case, which is a big piece of news, number one. And so everybody I love is going to be humiliated, aside from me. Um, now that I've kind of said that I'm on medication and I go to a psych psychiatrist, who's ever going to hire me? You know, when you do television shows and movies, you always have a, uh, a doctor come and give you a physical beforehand. Mm -hmm. And now I've kind of let it out of the bad that, that it's even worse. I have mental health issues. Why would you hire me? Why would you put me in million dollar productions? Yeah. If I could flip out at any moment, you don't know what, well, happen. we know the answer because Ellen passed. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that was my mind. I said like, what's the best thing to do? You know, I'll go downstairs. It's New York and I'll just run into the traffic and uh, I, I, I've never felt more dark and more alone than in that moment. And the elevator door, the elevator went to the bottom and the elevator door opened and you see the, the streets of Manhattan teeming, the, the busiest place on earth. And I've never felt more alone and more lonely. And I'm walking toward the doors, toward the traffic and the, the sliding doors, the elect automatic doors open. And I step out on the sidewalk and I'm just taking a breath and maybe looking for a countdown to 
to run into the traffic. And some guy comes into my periphery. I didn't turn my head and he goes, are you Howie Mandel? And I said, yeah. And he said, were you just on Howard Stern? And I went, yeah. And my, I don't think my heart could have dropped any further. And right before I took the first step, he goes, and this is before this movement, he goes, me too. And I went, what, what does that mean? And he goes, no, I have issues too. You were talking about the same thing I have. Thank you. I said, thank you for what? He goes, I suffer from this too. And it was the first time it's like somebody threw me a life preserver. I go, you really, it's not just me, it's you. And there was a stranger and that was like this weight got lifted off my fucking shoulder. And at that time there was no Wi-Fi. We didn't have the internet. And I went home and in the subsequent weeks, every day I got 50 letters yeah. and mail from people going, I heard you on Howard Stern. Thank you so much. I heard you on Howard Stern. And as much as these people claim that it helped them, I can't tell you how much these messages helped me. So the biggest savior, the biggest opening of a huge block in my life is words, words. And that's why you, that's why you doing this podcast is really, really important. It's not only, I told you, I, I listen to People it. tell me every, I get messages every day. People thanking me. I, I was me really honored that you would ask me to be part of it. I love you. I love what you do. And I love the special, but I just think that the fact that you've created a forum, because I know how much this helped me. Yeah. A forum where people are open. And it's also, is it, it's probably still staggering to you how many people it are like living their you in the elevator. What's and then this? someone like you, in in this case, it's OCD, in my case, depression, or people have anxiety, or Taylor Thompson talks about, you know, or Mulaney, Taylor talks about bipolar, and Mulaney talks about drug addiction, and all these things, people are like, fuck, oh, yeah. Well, I don't think there's anybody alive, any human being, that at some point in the span of their life, they're not going to need a coping skill. Mm -hmm. You know, things like OCD and clinical depression and bipolar and schizophrenia are um, manageable issues, mm -hmm. you know, if taken care of. It's hard to find where you can get that managed. That's the, that's the other thing. And they're, they're debilitating. But I'm, uh, beyond that, you know, just the co life is hard. Mm -hmm. And I think that people have a hard time coping and they don't go, you know, Becoming a parent is the most overwhelming thing. It's, it's joyful, but it's also, there's a lot of pressure. Losing, you know, you talk about the economy, losing a job, not being able to pay your rent. Dealing with have, what you're doing with your mother. Dealing with what I'm dealing, or dealing with the loss of loved ones yeah. and family members and dealing with the trauma of, of your upbringing and dealing with it. There isn't anybody alive and it's so unbelievable to me, and I say this a lot, that we don't take care of our mental health the way we take care of our dental health. And if somebody, you know, you'll go to the dentist and get x-rays and go, look, mom, no cavities, there's nothing wrong. And you're getting checked. Why is it not part of our curriculum where we can just openly talk or go to somebody and find out, get coping skills and figure, figure it out. And I think that that would be the solve to most of our world's problems. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. I'm, a little, I'm not really used to the green screen.